Well, hello there. It's Sandy, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I want to show you a little bit about Supercolor pencils at request of some viewers. When I mentioned recently that I was going to be doing a watercolor pencil class, I had a number of people say, I already bought the Supercolors. What are they? And like, how do they compare? Do I need to also get the Albrecht Dürer that you love? And yeah, I didn't want to leave that question on the table because there's enough people that have these. These are by Karen Dash and they are, they come in 120 set and they have these tins. The tins are not the little plastic trays you get with some other companies. They actually have metal on each of those trays. So they're quite nice that way. And they are a watercolor pencil. So you apply them like you do other watercolor pencils. And this is the swatches thereof. Very nice color set. This is the full set all laid out. Yes, that took me forever to make these, but it's gonna come in helpful when I do the watercolor pencil jumpstart class. So what I decided to do was a card and I'm gonna use this Avery L stamp set and do some coloring on that. And then there's a video that I've already posted over on IGTV, yes, I have been doing a bunch of Instagram TV videos. I've been trying to remember to post them on Facebook as well, have not been so good about that. But this particular one I'll show you in its little entirety, as short as it is, so that you can see these super colors in action as a fine art piece, as well as a card here, because what I find is that just making swatches doesn't tell me much of anything about actually using a product. That's one of the reasons why I'm not really big into swatching except for when it comes to be a teachable moment. Like right here, I'm showing you all the colors that I'm using for each one of these sections so that if you want to color along later, you'll have to like color and zoom and stop because this is going so fast. But I'm showing you the colors that I am using so that you'll know what those are. And I always post a picture of them now on my blog. So if you had them zoom by way too fast, you can go get the numbers there. Nonetheless, I am working on cold press watercolor paper and I'm doing a just kind of general coloring. I wanted the sky to be a dark blue and I wanted to see how these will react in a large area like that as well as in tiny areas. And now I'll slow down a little bit here for the watercoloring of the, the little people. Not a whole lot because it's just watercoloring little people. I didn't do any real shading in these because the little people, even though they're the focus of it, they're tiny. And tiny doesn't equate necessarily to needing to have a lot of lighting and shadow. What I'm carrying through for the lighting and the shading on this is the background the snow on the bottom and the snow under their feet and then the line of sky behind them that is going to differentiate them from that sky. So I did not do any any little uh, dimensional type stuff. No shadows really on them at all whatsoever. So don't think that you always have to do that in order to be successful. I am running through and trying to do all like colors at, a, at the same time so I don't have to wash my brush out. But if you're going to change major colors, know that your brush is picking up pigment every time you work with a watercolor pencil. It's sucking pigment into it. And if you have red on your brush and you touch it to a yellow area, you're going to drop red into your yellow. So unless you want that or unless it's a color you want to blend with, then I would recommend washing out your brush. The Supercolor pencils, to me, in this, this whole test, seem to work pretty much like the Albrecht Durer. I didn't find any major difference. There seems to be a, a good melting away. And I, I use the term melting away, and I know other people are starting to. I don't know if they're following me or if I just found that term somewhere and it just made, it, it's made its way into my brain. It doesn't sound very official, but it is what it does. It melts it into watercolor. And when it melts it away, sometimes it leaves a little bit of residue in there. The ink tense pencils leave a lot and you have to really scrub at them to do it. But with watercolor pencils, sometimes you'll get that little bit of texture in there. Now, I have not worked with watercolor pencils enough or done enough research into every single pencil the way I have into a lot of watercolors. 
And what I am going to make some educated guesses at, and I will be studying over the next year or two, is trying to find information on any of the pencils that I use that I'm having trouble getting a full melting away effect. That could be granulation. Remember, these are watercolors, and there are some watercolors that give you granulation. That's just what they do. That's what the paint is made to do. And it's possible some of that sometimes is, that's, that's the issue behind it. One of the things that made me think, you know, I really should probably do more research into that. I'm not gonna hold up on the watercolor jumpstart class to do this research, but one of the things on this particular card that caused me to think about this was painting that tree. And I don't know if you can tell, maybe if you're watching this on a big screen TV, you can see that there's almost a haze cast over the black lines that crisscross the tree, those little X's, the strings. And that would be because that color, that color of green, I think it's spruce green that I used, has some opacity to it. Now, all of the color charts all over the place, I don't know that very many of them, and I, I have to go look and see. I don't remember specifically with the super color. If it's Karen Dash, they might have a chart with all that in, on it. But most color charts don't have any of that information on them, whether they're opaque or not, whether they're granulating or not. Not like I'm used to with my Daniel Smith paints. I can find that information out really readily. So that is something that made me think, you know what? I wonder. All this time, there's some colors that I tend to find harder to melt away in all, all different brands have different colors that do that. Is that what I'm in encountering? I really did like, by the way, how well this sky worked out. I used two colors, indigo and night blue. And you could see when I swished my brush across it that that made a lot of really thick paint, putting down that much pigment. So that was kind of cool to find out. So for the quick assembly of the card, before we get to the Jose Andres uh, sketch in just a moment, I'm doing a little corner rounding. I haven't used my corner rounder in a while on the main panel. And I like to put it onto whatever layer I'm going to put it on before I do some embossing. It just gives more stability to the little piece of paper. And it's going to hold up better to things like the heat of the heat embossing, etc. To use some silver wow embossing powder on this and the silver is of such a color that it doesn't show up much unless you look at it in the light which means whoever sees this is going to have to turn it in the light to see what it says because it sort of disappears when you look at it straight on but of course this was followed with lots of little white pen dots for the snow so that is it i mean i I'm not going to say that these are better or worse than the Albrecht Durer. I'm going to say they're about the same from what I've already tried, but it will give you more details in the future as I experiment with them more. And now I give you Jose Andres, my hero at World Central Kitchen.